Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back friends, family, and intimate greeting associates. If you're new, what's going on? It's a pleasure to have you. If you're returning, welcome back best friend. <sighs> It is thriller season, if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail and the title. <laughs> it is thriller season, and the sun is going down. That's why it's dark inside the apartment. And when the sun goes down, the thrillers come out. <laughs> I've got four thrillers here. Four intense, grueling thrillers that I actually have no idea what any of them are really about, but... <laughs> We're gonna spend a week reading them, what do you say? Two of these are from Ashlyn's shelf because she's heavy into the thriller genre and she has some excellent reads. We are going to be starting this thriller season off with Alice Feeney's Rock, Paper, Scissors. This was on Ashlyn's shelf. She recommended that I read this. If you have not seen her reading thrillers for a week, that the video that she did back in August, I highly recommend you go and see that. That is a very well done video, as all of her freaking videos are. If you're not a fan, you gotta go check out Ashlyn Kaylee. Right here, she's great, sub to her. <laughs> but she read Rock, Paper, Scissors for that. This was actually, no, you didn't read this for her. She did not read, well, go read her thrillers. No, she read this for a completely different video. Her, re <clears throat> this was the book that kind of got her into thrillers. That's what this book is. This is gonna be one of those books that once you start it, you'll probably finish it in the setting that you started in. And so I got a few hours. I gotta work tomorrow, but I got a few hours and I think I can plow through this. Oh, this is barely 300 pages. <gasps> okay, so what is this about? We've got things have been wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Wright. Wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Wright. Uh -huh. You gotta love English. Every anniversary, the couple exchange traditional gifts and Adam's wife writes him a letter she never lets him read until now. Oh, that's all. Okay. Self-confessed workaholic Adam Wright has face, has face blindness? Yeah. What is that? This is a thing? Yeah, it's a thing. This is a literal condition. Wow. Self-confessed workaholic Adam Wright, thank you, thank you. Self-confessed workaholic Adam Wright has face blindness. He can't even recognize his own wife and Amelia is sick of feeling unseen. Makes total sense. Any spouse would, really. When Adam and Amelia win a weekend away to Scotland, it might be just what their marriage needs. This weekend may make or break their marriage, but they didn't randomly win this trip. One of them is lying and someone doesn't want them to live happily ever after. Ashlyn told me that the end of this book is crazy. One of those up in the air, holy crap, did that freaking happen moments. And I'm gonna start this tonight. We're gonna get our pants thrilled off, you know what I mean? <laughs> so buckle up, you know the drill, montage. Well, that was a freaking like supernatural. Uh, Ashlyn said nothing about paranormal shite going on. So freaking bring that on if that's gonna be a recurring theme or the case or whatnot. I am totally down. Already, I hate these characters. They are so petty to each other, but I think that's the whole point. I hope both of them get the biggest slice of humble pie ever. I hope the wife gets over herself and I hope the man gets punched in the face several times. That's all I wish. That's all I wish. Jeez, let's keep going. So it's been, I don't know, maybe an hour? 
Something like that. Currently 73 pages in. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's multiple point of view. So you, you get both Amelia and Adam's perspective. In between their perspectives of what's going on in the present, you get these flashbacks through the lens of letters that Amelia has written to Adam but has never given them to him. And you get their life pretty much uh, from the past. And I think it's gonna, I think it takes the reader on a journey up to the present. And so you get it when they were dating, like when they met, when they're dating, when they get engaged, when they get married, when they start getting successful with their careers and their jobs. There's this looming kind of tension, looming presence, this, this feeling of being watched and this feeling of fear. But then you meet a third point of view, a woman named Robin. And you get her little perspective and some things start to make sense. Deep down, even, even though you're focused on, wow, these people suck and their relationship is absolutely terrible. There's still this, this feeling of they never should have come here. And both of them have expressed inwardly in their minds to the reader that they both have plans for this week. Now, I don't know if there's going to be a murder. I don't know if there's going to be something. <laughs> I am going to continue on, continue on. What? That was one of the most heart pounding, that was creepier than some horror novels that I've read. Oh my gosh, that was a terrifying scene. Dude, I, I don't even know what to think. I don't even know how to feel. Well, we gotta keep going after that. Oh, I probably would have pooped my pants. I started swinging. Yeah. If their marriage isn't fetch and fixed at the end of this, I don't know who set something. Dude, this already is better <laughs> all than the housemate. It literally gives you chills. Like, it's so scary. This was recommended to you? I wasn't expecting this oh. when you gave this to me. Where are the words? I don't have any. I have made it 50% of the way through the book. Oh, man. This is, this is, this, oh man, there's so many questions that I have. If this is all just one big setup, but both of these characters, Amelia and Adam, my, yeah, no, my, my opinions of them still haven't changed. They both suck, really. But man, I, I don't want to put it down. I don't want to stop. But right now I have to, because I have to be a responsible adult and I can't just read books all day, even though I'd like to. So I will pick up with you on the morrow. Oh, people, it's the next day, it's the next evening. Got got home and have been hanging out with Ashlyn and, and Meshach. We had dinner, now we're outside on the balcony having a nice little reading date while the weather's still nice. And I've been reading a little bit uh, since I got home and oh my gosh, there's so many questions that I have. There's one particular character that I'm unsure, there's three or four possibilities who this person could be. You don't know why they're there, you don't know why they're, I mean, you kind of understand her motivations and I'm waiting for this big reveal. So let's go outside, let's read some more, and I'll catch up with you later.
What the heck is this? What is that? Dog collar on the tombstone of a dead author. I'm baffled. I don't even want to stink. Dude, I don't even know what to say. Pick it up right now. Pick it up right now. Holy crap, people, 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 what? Okay, Meshach, I'm not playing with you right now. Okay, oh my gosh, wait. I just found out who Robin was, or is, I think. Yes, that was expertly written. The entire time, I don't even know what to think. She did this name play thing so well. At first I thought I was going insane. Like, did I miss something? There's no way, I, I've been sitting here reading this on the page, there's no way I missed this. But then you realize, wait a minute, she, she walked me right into this. Alice Feeney walked me right into it. Okay, I'm on page 244, and when is this stinking book end? 291? I finished Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Fiend. Oh, wow. This was a treat. This was an unexpected thrill ride. The twists and turns and the ups and downs get you every single time because you don't see it coming. There was one huge reveal that changed the direction of the entire story. It was so well done. It was so, so well done. I get this a 4.5. This was great. More Alistini in the future? Yeah, I think so. But I did move on. Last night, I read the first chapter of Dark Matter. Holy moly moly. Already, this, this feels like a completely different monster that I'm about to tackle. This already feels like it's going to be a darker novel. This book. Don't know how I'm supposed to cope with this craziness. I don't like this angle. <sighs> That's classic. When don't I film from this perspective? Dark Matter. I didn't catch it on camera. <sighs> I regret it because I just read. It was so unexpected and so tragic. That was so brutal and so heart pounding. It's the definition of a thriller. This is so good. And I'm not even. I'm what? I'm on page 109 of 340. So I got so I got a ways to go. And I, there's so many questions I don't have answered yet. There's so many layers to unpack here. I'm just gonna read until I go to bed. Read until I get sleepy.
That's that's a genius, genius plot twist. That's. Oh. People, it's been a long time since I updated you. I think the last time I picked up the camera was Thursday. It is now Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Ashley and I had a very fun weekend. We celebrated our anniversary in the woods. We camped in the back of our Jeep with our big buddy boy, Meshack. And it was a good time. It was a real good time. And then around that, we went on several dates and then went shopping a little bit. We did read while we were camping, but not all that much. We just were more enjoying each other's company. We watched a movie. Um, and I have read a ton since I, I don't know the last update. I have no idea what the last update is, but I'm on chapter 14, page 297. I have two chapters left. Uh, I think, yeah, the book is 340 pages. So I had the last big chapter and technically like an epilogue chapter. I was gonna try to do four books this, this challenge because there's so many thrillers that I wanna read, but. I didn't give myself enough time, and so it just didn't happen. I say let's crank the sucker out and uh, move on to the last and final book, shall we? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, I also have to say this. This book has one of the craziest plots I think I've ever read. I, I think I've learned more about quantum theory and things to do with quantum things more from this book than anything else in my life. It feels like I'm reading the book version of like Inception. This just has layers upon layers upon layers. It is really hard to grasp at times. It's so polarizing that you cannot put the book down. It, this has had some of the biggest plot twists I've ever read and it, it's so good. Ugh. <sighs> so good. It ended? That's an utter five star. No, no questions about it, no thoughts. Hands down. I was expecting something great and I received something outstanding. This was the most mind bending, crisscrossy, up down, turny lefty righty thingy I've ever read. 
five stars all the way, Mr. Blake Crouch. It's hard to go into what this book is about without giving away spoilers. Uh, a man named Jason pretty much gets kidnapped and he wakes up in a different life. The woman that he was married to for 15 years is no longer his wife. The child that they had together does not exist. And so the whole story is him trying to get back to what is normal. I will tell you the plot twists. <laughs> I didn't see anything in this book coming. There's nothing like this. Folks, I think without further ado, we need to step into the third and final book of the challenge, which is Hidden Pictures by Jason Reckrelak. I don't know how to say that last name, but Hidden Pictures. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again. I just filmed on Ashlyn's SD card, so if that if, if a blooper of me randomly pops up in one of her videos, which I'm hoping it does, okay, okay. Last night I did start Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculac. I am 103 pages in. Uh, I know I do that to you often in vlogs. I know I do. I know I read ahead and then I go, oh, I'm sorry, I read it. Well, it's it's just so good, this book. I was anticipating it being good because it's a thriller. That's what the video is called. Oh my gosh, it's one of those that once you start it, it's gripping from the very beginning and you don't want to put it down. It's it's easy to read because you get a lot of the, these children drawing. Okay, I, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. This book is essentially, it kind of reminds me of The Housemaid because this, our main character Mallory, She's a recovering addict. She's been clean for about 18 months and she gets a job babysitting for the summer for this really wealthy family that's just moved into a southern New Jersey neighborhood. And she spends all day with their five-year-old son, Teddy. He has a real knack for drawing and he has an imaginary friend that he draws often. I will say from the very beginning, even in the interview, there are some creepy things being set up. She lives basically in a cabin in the woods behind their house. <laughs> so she's a little bit isolated at night. And so so there are some creepy things that happen. There's some creepy sounds, some creepy events, but I think the creepiest thing that happens is the pictures that the boy draws. Some pictures that are given to Mallory are quite shocking. There's some supernatural creepy vibes going on that are pulling me in. It's giving off horror feelings. I'm a third of the way through. So what do you say? Let's go. I feel like this book could go in a number of different directions. It could either go in the supernatural, we're gonna have some haunting ghosts kind of stuff, or we're gonna have some bloody, gruesome, stabby, stabby. This is gonna get wild, uh, especially the last three pictures that the boy drew. Well, actually, we don't know if the boy drew them or not. We have no idea. 
But they are vivid and they are gruesome. And I'm not gonna show you because part of me doesn't wanna get demonetized because that possibly could happen. <laughs> but two, I also want you guys to read this for yourself. The pictures are really like the biggest part of it. It's fun going along for the ride. All right, folks, got a little update. I'm on page. 216. My goodness. Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely supernatural. Uh, I, I think I told you my theories last update. Definitely supernatural. We got seances. We got Ouija boards. We got ghosts. Stuff I don't approve of, by the way. Don't, don't mess or trifle with that crap. Get you in a heap of trouble. Um, my goodness. There's so many things to be afraid of <laughs> in this book. We don't know who's leaving the drawings in the cabin. It's creepy, but there's a love interest. So hopefully that goes well. But as we all know, Ian's Top most biggest literary pet peeve is the miscommunication trope, and boy, <sighs> is that happening. Let's not lie, let's not do stupid shady crap. Uh, that just digs us into a hole. I hate that, that's kind of what's happening uh, with some of the sideline conflict or sideline plots, and it's just super annoying. We are learning a host of things about the history of this little cottage. I think I, I have about, I think maybe like 140 pages left, so I'm gonna try to pound that out tonight. I think the, 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 it's, it's gonna get more creepy. It's gonna get more um, creepy, and I, I think it's gonna get more um, creepy. So yeah. This right here is the crap that I'm talking about. When characters lie themselves into a situation and then the secrets that they've been keeping for so long get brought out, brought up, and exposed by an another character at the most inconvenient of times and it just it just adds a level of frustration i hate it i know it's 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 close to, ugh, it's supposed to be realistic it's supposed to be i don't know man i just hate it so much get the montage <laughs> comfy i'm sick of sitting in that chair and i haven't Done the mattress in a long time, so I'm gonna read down here. Hopefully, you don't know, fall asleep. I gotta finish this book tonight. Dark hallway. Ooh. That's disgusting. 
my god. Why does this have to be so stressful? Dumb decisions, always. <laughs> Well, hello, family, friends, intimate reading associates. All right, thrillers for a week. That was, um, <laughs> for lack of a better term, thrilling. Let's do a little bit of a recap, I guess. Hidden Pictures was crazy, <laughs> wasn't it? Hidden Pictures was absolutely crazy. I don't even know like where to begin to organize my thoughts on this book. It started off creepy. It started off from the get-go. Oh my goodness. And then as the story progresses, and as you, you get more information, um, dude, the, the plot twist was set up in such a way, you didn't see that coming at all. Like there was there was maybe one detail given that where you're, think, you're, you're thinking, this could be, this could totally be it. This could totally be what's going on. And then fetching Jason Reculak just, Left fields you, and he and he completely just knocks you off your feet, dude. I you saw my reaction. I didn't know where that came from. Hidden Pictures is like this perfect mixture between like horror and thriller. It it just it combines these two worlds together because it doesn't seem it doesn't feel wholly like a thriller and it doesn't feel wholly like a horror, but it's got elements of both. I I loved I loved the dynamic and the differences between all three of these novels. Hidden Pictures uh, I would give it a four four straight across the board. The whole time I really like this creepy setup, this this unknown mystery, these things that are happening that are very supernatural and it's like, there's something going on here. There's something that should not be going on here. I think that the elements that I didn't like about it were the needless drama between a side character and the main character. I just think there's some needless drama. But you gotta do that to throw in some extra, extra zest. I don't know, I don't know. There was just some stuff on the peripheral of the story that I'm kind of going, I didn't really need, but the plot twist right at the end and the epilogue. The epilogue was so beautiful. It actually almost made me cry. I, I felt that kind of welling in my chest. It was melancholy, it was sad, but it was also very beautiful. You just have to pick up the book. The best part about the entire reading experience of this book is getting these pictures. I recommend all three of these books, dude. Thrillers, um, <clears throat> I think I've caught the itch for thrillers. So give me your recommendations because I need more. I need more of that in my life. Guys, folks, thank you for sticking around. I know, I know it's, 
I know it's few and far between that I've been posting. I've just been trying to rethink some things with YouTube and I, I, I want to give you quality over quantity. I don't want to give, I just, I don't want to bombard the channel with just ideas after ideas after ideas because that creatively would burn me out. And I want to, I want to enjoy the things that I'm reading. I don't want to just push out stuff just to push it out. I'm going to give you quality. I want this channel to be known for quality. And eventually once this becomes a full-time thing and, and I can get away from the, the nine to five, more will come. But folks, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. I know it's, I know it's been a while. Trust me, there's some good things in, in the works. Ash and I had a, we had a business planning meeting for our YouTube channels uh, a couple days ago and I'm excited for the things coming up and you should be too. We got some big, big vlogs, big vlogs coming up and I'm going to start doing some shorts. I, I think I, I really want to start implementing that and getting creative with 60 second clips and, and that kind of thing. So just stick around for everything that's going to be happening. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Honestly, without you all, this channel is not possible. I, I cannot thank you enough. I cannot express my gratitude, my love, and my appreciation for you all. And folks, I will see you in the next one.